Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this vintage lace and millinery standing angel. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make this standing angel, we'll start with the pattern. It's about eight and a half inches tall and eight inches wide. And this is folded in half. This is one pattern to make the back and the front. So I actually folded it like this. This is the bodice. And then this is the skirt. And I just kind of did the shape of the figure. This is about two inches. This is about four inches. And I think you can see the lines. About two and a quarter and then out. Anyway, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. Just give yourself enough room at the top. This is one, two, maybe two and a half, enough room at the top so that you can, you know, reach inside. And then a little shape like this, and then out for the skirt. Also, when you come to the bottom, try to make that more straight instead of flaring out. Now I'm gonna use this pattern and cut one piece of cotton batting, and I'm gonna open it up and cut the whole piece of cotton batting, and one piece of my dress fabric. My cotton batting is on the back. I've pinned it all together and I also cut two five inch squares for the sleeves. Now I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew this all the way around the edge with a little baby seam allowance, about an eighth of an inch. As long as I was sewing, I decided to seam up the edge of the sleeves. This is a quarter inch seam allowance and the five inch square. I'm gonna set those aside. I'm not turning them right side out yet. I'm just gonna set those aside. Now, this is the front of the angel's dress. You can use either side, but I just kind of centered this part of the fabric on the front. And so I wanted that to be the focus. I'm gonna fold this in half and then mark two inches above the bottom, above the fold. This is where I'm going to begin to place my trims. This will be the bottom edge of the trim because I'm gonna box off the bottom so that she'll stand up and I'm gonna lose a lot of this so I don't wanna spend time decorating down here. I'm only gonna decorate from here to here. So I have a few trims in my stash and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do but I have a couple of ideas. First of all I'm going to use this eyelet. This is the right side. I'm going to put it kind of across her waist about like this. Let's see I think I will center one of these and I think that'll go there. That'll be nice kind of give a little emphasis to her waist. And then I have these cute buttons. These are glass, they're just the right color. I might put a button there too. And then for the bottom, I like this because it has roses. It doesn't show up very well, so I'll probably add some kind of a, you know, buttons or beads or something in between those and Okay, there's my line. Oh, it's higher than I thought. Okay, I'm not sure. I'll pro I like to have something scalloped at the bottom. Here's a small little scallop trim. That's cute. And then something in between. This one's too short. Let me kind of decide what I'm going to use. And I'll line it up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have placed the eyelet across the little waistband and I've centered this little 
arch and I'm going to zigzag just in the seam and leave the top and bottom free and then I will hand tack the top edge and leave this free. For these two, I will um, zigzag across, um, I will zigzag up the edge, cross the top, down, and also where these two pieces overlap. So this will be secured pretty much everywhere except the bottom edge. And then I'll come back and I will add this one and this one. My objective here is to use laces that are easy to see through because I want the color and the pattern of the fabric to show through. I don't want to obscure it too much. So I'll do that little machine zigzagging and I'll be right back. I've sewn down my first three pieces and when I trim off the excess, I always save these. And then at the end of the year, I use them for wreaths and nests. Now this one is going to go over the center, which is why I wasn't concerned about zigzagging here because I knew that this one would go over it. And in the same way, this one I'm going to place over here, over this seam. And I think that I will zigzag along the bottom edge of this one and I'm going to hand tack this one. I've tacked down the top edges of these laces and now I'm going to add some mother of pearl buttons. Um, oh, these are about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to sew them on with a double strand of quilting thread and then I'm going to add some pearls as long as I'm going to have to tack down these points of this fillet lace I might as well just add a little pearl. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Now I'm sewing these little pearl beads to the points of this fillet lace. Just one pearl to each point. I'm just flattening out each little end and then my needle comes up. This is a long skinny needle with a single strand of off-white quilting thread. And then I'll pick up a pearl and then sew just below the point so that the pearl sits right below the point, each point of the lace. I'll work my way all the way across. Of course, I don't need one here because that will be my seam allowance, so I'll go to this next to the last one. That looks good, and I will secure my thread over here in the seam allowance. I'm being very careful not to pull the thread in between the beads too tightly so it doesn't buckle up or tighten in between the beads. Okay, that looks good. And I was thinking about adding a pink glass button here, but I have some other options and I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna leave that for later. And right now I'm gonna fold this in half and stitch down each side with a quarter inch seam allowance. So now I've sewn up the sides and I will reach inside. We're gonna box off the corners now. I'll just reach inside all the way to the corner just to make sure this is nice and flat. And then I'm going to sew one inch across from the point right here on each uh, here here and here. I also clipped the edge of the seam allowance so that this will sit flat when I'm sewing. And now I'll cut off those triangles, trim any threads and clip this curve right here, right in the waist nice to have sharp scissors that are sharp all the way to the point. And now I'll turn this right side out. I'm using a chopstick to get right to the very edges and to make sure that seam 
is all the way turned, okay. This is looking good. I want the base of the project to be heavy. Um, I don't want it to be, you know, wobbly. And I have found that these pellets are fine, but they're not quite as heavy as I would like. I'm not gonna stuff it all the way, just, you know, about this much. So if you have the pellets, great, you know, they will work. But I like to use this, it's bird gravel. This one's called KT High Calcium Grit. I used to use something called gravel and grit, but I just couldn't find it this time. And then I'll use a funnel. I'll put the funnel in the top and I'll add about a cup of this grit. It's heavy. Now I've heard of other people, you know, use bird seed or some sort of grain. I forgot what it's called. And that's great. The, and some people even use sand. Those are all good ideas, but I just found that they took a lot of room to store. Like, I don't know, the, a bag of bird seed is just so big and heavy. And this is a little bit more efficient. I feel like that's enough. A little bit more maybe. I also hesitate to use anything, oh, millet. Is that it? Anyway, there's something else. And um, I hesitate to use anything that's too um, organic because I don't want anything decaying in there. So I think uh, sand would be a better choice than let's say uh, bird seed or any kind of grain. Okay, that feels good. Now I'm gonna stuff it with polyfill all the way to the top. I just have a little bit more to stuff and then I'm gonna gather up the top with a needle and thread. It's important to stuff all the way to the top because you don't want the neck to be floppy. I'm also making sure that the sides are nice and smooth. Just a little bit more. Great. Then I'll secure, I have a double strand of quilting thread. I'll secure the knot on the inside, doesn't really matter. And then I'm just gonna go all the way around with a running stitch. Try to tuck it all inside. And then I'm gonna go back and forth a few more times. That looks good. So I'll just stitch through one or two more times and then I'll secure the thread. Next, we'll make the sleeves. The sleeves are the two five inch squares that I've folded over and sewn up the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now the hands are actually going to be cut from the ends of a popsicle stick. So I'm using my wire cutters and cutting about an inch off each end. I don't like having a lot of splinters, but I am gonna cover that with fiber fill. So these are gonna be the hands that will come out through the edges of the sleeves. I'm gonna gather up the sleeves with a double strand of craft thread. I'm gonna gather around one edge of the sleeve, securing the knot on the inside, right in the seam allowance. And then I'll just go around the circle. So before I tie that off, I'm going to insert the rounded end of the hand into the sleeve. So that is so that when I fold it back, I'm going to see the hand. There it is. So I'm gonna secure this by wrapping. I've already gathered it, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap it and tie it off nice and tight. And I am gonna secure it also with glue. And as 
just kind of a pro tip is that on one flat side of the stick, try to center the seam allowance. And then on the other side, try to get more of the gathers so that this flat side will be next to the body and her hand won't be like out. It'll be, you know, just resting nicely along her body. That looks good. Now I'm going to apply some hot glue right here. This is the side with the seam allowance. I'm gonna press that into the glue like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Sort of pull these little gathers out and apply some glue and press that into the glue like that. Then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of fiber fill like about the size of a cotton ball. And I'm gonna wrap that around the raw end. I don't want it to be too plump. I just want to cover the raw end of the stick so that there's no hard edges or splinters. And then I think I'll add a little bit of glue to that too. That will hold that polyfill in place. And then I'm gonna turn it right side out to be sure that I have enough of the hand showing. Let's see, there it is. There we go. And again, I want this side to be flatter and this side to have more of the gathers. Then we're gonna gather up the top edge, but first I wanna do the second hand. And we'll see how it looks. And if we have about the same amount of the hand coming through. There it is. That looks good. Actually, I think this one's better. This one has, it's, um, maybe this one has a little bit too much stuffing. I think I'll pull a little bit out. That looks better. All right, now we're going to gather up the top edge of each sleeve. Now I'm going to tuck in a quarter of an inch from the top edge of the sleeve and gather up that top edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be disguised, so it doesn't have to be tiny little stitches or anything. Just get all the way around. Then I'm going to pull that tight and secure it and set it aside and do the second one. For my second sleeve, I started with a nice long thread and I am going to secure it, but I'm not going to cut the thread. I'm going to use the same thread to attach the sleeves to the, to the dress. Okay. So the seam should be to the inside. And then the top of the sleeve is right on top of the body. Oh, and also, if you like, you can cut this piece a little bit shorter and not even tuck it in. You don't even need that seam allowance. So that looks good. I think I'll pin that. And then the second one the same way. So I'm going to secure this to the dress and then I'm gonna go over and secure this one to the dress. It can be sloppy. It's gonna be covered up, so don't worry. Just kind of secure it and then you can even glue it. Now I cut across through the dress and now I'm securing the second sleeve. That 
that's probably good. One or two more stitches. I'll secure the thread in back. And then I'm gonna stand up and have a look. And I'm gonna glue a little bit here. A little bit of glue here and here to just tack those down. So there we go, we have the dress, the sleeves, and the hands. Now, next we have the collar and the head and the hair. I have prepared these one and a half inch ball knobs. I don't know, I think I'll probably use this one. I don't know, I ordered one and a half inch ball knobs and they came, they're slightly oblong, but I just made them anyway and I think they're fine. Um, and then I have this hat you know, I call this a millinery project because I'm using some of this, these little pieces from this hat. You can tell I've used quite a few flowers from this hat. And um, this is going to go over right here to form her collar. And there's a lot of texture and dimension in this flower. And um, so it's gonna disguise any sort of like unevenness up here. So I'm just gonna glue that right on. That looks good, but I'm gonna go in and spot glue in the back and the sides and just make sure it's nice and secure. Here's an example of another flower hat that I got and it still has a price tag on it, eight, $8.50. Um, they're not hard to find and you know you could see there's such a variety of colors and sizes and shapes on here i kind of don't really have the heart to cut this one because it's in pretty good condition but i just want to reassure you that you can find these this one's cool it has a net but the flowers are actually more white so anyway i always look for these at thrift shops and wherever i go so there's the collar, I spot glued it all around. And next is the head. I'm gonna use a generous amount of glue and just glue that right into the center of the flower, of the collar. I don't want my glue to squish out too much, so I try to keep it in the center. And then I'll hold it for a second. Now this one actually looks pretty good, but if uh, I felt like there's a gap or anything didn't look right, I'd look for this millinery and kind of just like add a little bit of millinery here and there to fill in if I have to. Or maybe, what is this? Oh, here's an extra flower. Maybe I could stick a little petal in there if I had to. But this looks pretty good. Now we'll do the hair. I have my favorite loopy mohair. And I have two four by six index cards. I'm going to wrap the long way around the index cards about 60 or 70 times. I'm trying to be careful not to pull this tight. I don't want this cards to bow like this. So I'm very careful not to pull too tightly. And I'm gonna wrap this, like I say, maybe 60 or 70 times, just go across and back until it's nice and full, all the way edge to edge. Here we go, I wrapped my card 65 times. And now with my sewing machine, I'm gonna stitch across the center, back and forth, all the way through the card and all the loops on both sides. And now I'm gonna tear the cards along the perforation in the center and remove them. tell there's a little piece still there it is I gotta remove that last little bit now I'm gonna call this the wig and of course if you've watched my videos you've seen this before but there's always somebody who maybe this is their first time so the idea is that the wig will be the center so that um, the seam of the wig 
So the center seam goes here and then it gets glued and then the ends wrap around to the back. That's the idea. So we'll start by squeezing out some glue from the top center of her forehead down along where her ear would be and around the base to the back. Around the back. I have to work quickly. Can't spend a lot of time showing that. And then I'll find the center and just press that seam into the glue. Great, that looks good. And then we'll repeat for the second side from the top center of her forehead down around to the back center of her neck. And then I'm gonna press this seam all the way around. Then when we pull up the hair, I wanna make sure I can see all of her features. That looks good, but we're gonna give her more of a hairstyle. Okay, I'm going to draw all of this hair up into a top knot. Kind of like this. And I'm gonna tie it off with a thread. I have a needle and a double strand of quilting thread. So I'm just gonna wrap the hair right here, wrapped around twice, and then I'm gonna tie it. It's a double strand. So I can pull it tight with confidence. I don't think my thread's going to break. And that's gonna look cute. There we go. Let's do her halo. So for her halo, I'm gonna use this 20 gauge gold wire. This is from the craft store. I'm gonna pull out about maybe nine inches. Fold it in half, loop it around, twist the ends together. And this circle is going to be the halo that comes over her head. This is a little too big. Let me tighten that up a little. That's better. I think this is gonna to be too long. I'm gonna cut this to about an inch. The little stem will be about an inch. So there it is, here. It's a circle with a stem that's bent to a 90 degree angle. It's kind of like what you use to dye Easter eggs. So I'm gonna apply some glue here to the end and press it into her top knot. She's going right into the center. I'm gonna hold it for a second. That looks good. And then I want to put some kind of an embellishment right here. And I think, here we go, I have a couple of options. Nope. Maybe. This is cute. It's like a vintage crochet little rose. I just got that old color. It could also go there. And this, of course, is that too much on the nose because it really does match very well. <laughs> I've had these for like 30 years, so they came from Elsie's Exquisites. I don't know if they're even still in business, but that's where I got them. I'm just, I'm gonna have to use this because, like I say, it's almost like it was made for this fabric. Now the trick is not to put it too low so even though it feels like it's right up underneath the collar, this looks better than putting it down on her belly. Okay, let's do the wings. For the wings, I tell you what, I have been cleaning out the garage. And I have so many craft supplies in the garage. And every time I come across something, I'm like, ooh, I remember that. Oh, what can I do with that? Oh, I remember I used to use that. And I found this paper capers, paper twist, twisted paper it's called. 
And um, I remember this is what I used to use for angel wings, so I thought I would give it a try. I'm gonna cut off about nine inches. I guess I should measure. Anyway, I looked online on Amazon to see if there was anything like this, and there is. So I ordered some just to make sure that it would kind of behave the same way, and I'm sure it's not the identical product, but of course, you can do whatever you want for the wings. You could use a doily, or you could do the, um, the scrapbook paper. Anyway, you untwist this stuff, and I'm gonna untwist it all the way down. There we go. All right, so it's pretty much all untwisted. And then I'm gonna determine the center right there, and then just give it one half a twist. And this will be the wings. So I'll squeeze out some glue right here and press it into the back of her neck. That's another reason why I'm not too concerned if the if the neck um, looks a little sloppy or whatever, it doesn't really matter because everything gets covered up. So those are the wings. And I'm gonna add a little more glue in here. Just to hold that in the X shape. It's heavy on the bottom, so she'll stand up. And the fun thing about this paper twist is that you can really shape it. So if I wanted this to, you know, go like wavy or whatever, I could kind of figure out how to do that. Okay. Now I feel like this is a lot of white, the white hair and the white wings. So try to add something that's too big. That could be good. It's not a lot of contrast. Let's see what else I have. I found this a little bit smaller millinery flower and a little leaf. And I think I'll just do the leaf, the flower, and a little bit of this netting. And I think that'll be just perfect. All right, we'll put the netting first. <laughs> it's right there. It doesn't show up very well because it's so light. And then the leaf. I'm gonna just leave this wire stem because why not? And then the flower is gonna go right here. And she's done. <laughs> I love the quirky little netting. It looks so cute. All right, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and we will wrap this up. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.